What up, YouTube? Y'all already know Big Lou and Daisy tapping back in with what it do with Big Lou and a ZR2, baby, baby. So she's in that position again, sitting in front of me. I just dropped a couple shorts asking if this is dominant behavior right here or is she in position of protection now there was just a couple dogs i don't know if you guys can still see there's a man walking there he has an old german shepherd walking with him maybe a mixed german shepherd but he has the, the dog has the shepherd traits the brown with the saddle on the back and then they had like australian shepherd or a queensland healer merle color in front and when she seen them she got in front of me again like this and sat um a little while ago there was another dog that went by and i posted that as well and so when she sees uh, 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 when she hears certain noises like a dog barking or making a dog making noise that's close, she'll get, you know, she'll start looking around and she'll place herself like she's doing now. Or when she sees a, a stranger come, right, she sees a stranger come from a distance um, and if they have a dog with them, and she'll get in this position. I don't take it. I heard people tell me. I've heard different people saying it's a dominant, it's a dominant trait, dominant behavior. Um, but she knows I'm the alpha, so I, I, you know, I don't take that. I don't believe that. I believe that she's going in protection. She's being protective. Uh, her being a female, uh, in my experiences, the females are way more protective than males. If uh, somebody comes by your car, they'll start, you know, they'll let them know, hey, you're crossing the line, get away. You know, they might not bite, but they will alert you. And I believe that's that's better than biting because, you know, the people don't know. Are they going to bite me or what? You know, let me get away from their car. Let me get away from their property. Let me get away from whatever, their kid. Let me get away from their bike. Let me get away from this or that, you know. So especially here in California, the, all the laws about liability and stuff like that, you know. Um, and so anyways, I dropped a little video, a little short, like I said, asking that. So I want to I hear back from you guys, anybody that has... Especially those, I dropped it in short first because a lot of people that aren't subbed to the channel will see it, you know. Um, so I dropped it there first and then um, I'm doing the little video now. But I also did another short. Um, so when I got her, she was straight gray, gray and white. That's what her paperwork says, gray and white. But now in the last couple, maybe week or so, I'm starting to see brown coming on her, on her top line. She has some brown around her ears here and also... I think there's some on her rear between her, her thigh, I guess her upper thigh where her private is right there. You see some brown. Um, also, her shoulders, there's a little bit of brown there. So I'm curious if, uh, you know, is that is that fawn, blue fawn coming out or is that uh, a tricolor? And if you guys don't know tricolor, they have three different tries. I believe, no, four, four different tries in the American Bullies. They got the lilac tri, which to me, lilac is like a mixture of brown and gray. It kind of looks silky to me. It's got a shine to it. You got the chocolate uh, tri, which is, uh, you know, dark chocolate brown with the rust brown and then white. And then you got black tri, which is obviously black with the, with the rust color and then white. And then you got the blue tri, which is blue coat with the rust color and then white right so basically the black try is like the rottweiler doberman color and then the chocolate try is also the rottweiler doberman color but it's that other color that's not common with the rottweiler doberman i don't know if you guys are familiar with the dogs i know mre is familiar with dobermans they have the they have the chocolate color and then they have the rust right and those rottweilers dobermans go for more than the black ones you know what i mean so I was thinking it was that, you know, is it possible that she can be gray and she can be gray with a uh, rust color and then white? That would be three colors. Right. So I don't know. So I'm asking people out there because I've always had white, uh, white, either American pit bull terriers or bullies with the brown spots, um, a brindle. And then I had the red and then. Uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. Those are all the colors I've had over the years. So this is the first blue one I had, you know, it's gray. It's gray coat, but people call it blue. You know what I mean? So I'm 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 curious to ask anybody that's out there that has, you know, blue noses or or you know or the gray coat dogs, you know, if they've ever seen that, <clears throat> and if they have, what do they consider that blue fawn or tricolor? So drop it in the comment section if you know. And um, see she, again right now, she came over here and sat right by me. There's some guys over there. They have a um, I don't know if you can see them. They have a, a, a remote control car. You know, so she came right here and sat by me. So she's 
I take that as being protective. I don't take that as being dominant. She's not sitting on near my leg. She's about, I don't know, you guys can see my foot. She's a couple inches away from my foot. So this is going to be a short video. Drop, you know, if you're familiar or even if you have a different opinion about something that I said that I'm asking, drop it in the comment section. There's another dog over there. There's no dog over there. She don't see it yet, but she'll probably come over here when she sees it. Daisy, come here, girl. Come here. Come here. So with that being said, Big Lou, Daisy going to tap out. It's very windy. I don't know if you guys are hearing the wind on the audio. I'm not sure about that, but uh, this is going to be a short one. Also, let you guys know when I dropped a video the other day doing the DNA swab in her mouth, I got an email today saying that they received it. It's in the lab. So probably I'll probably get another email with the results in a day or two, I imagine. Um, very quick. I mailed it back on Monday morning. Uh, yesterday was Tuesday. Today's Wednesday. So I mailed it Monday morning about 4.30 in the morning. I dropped it in the mailbox. So I'm already getting an alert today. Email saying they got it. It's in the lab. It only went to San Diego, which is also California. But, you know, you're talking like six hours from here. Um, but the fact is they got it already. That's what I'm, you know, they're working fast. Also, I should be getting Daisy's papers. Um, I sent her uh, American or A, or A B K C paperwork in um, the one that's given to the to the breeder. The breeder, like in other words, if you you had puppies, you send the information in. You say, hey, this is the dame, the, which is the mom, the dam, or the dame. The sire is this so and so. This is their number. This is the mother's number. The sire is the father. The dame or the dam is the female. This is her registration number. This is the father. The sire's registration number. I had a litter of ten puppies. I got six females and four males, and they'll send it accordingly. Uh, there'll be six papers that says females, female, females, like three times on the bottom, and then for the males, it'll say male pup, male pup, male pup, like three times on the bottom. And like I said, they'll send you four for the males and six for the females, or whatever you had in the litter. And then when you sell the puppy to somebody, it has two different boxes. One says pet home only. If you check that off, that means that. Uh, that the registration won't uh, recognize any puppies. You know, if you try to send paperwork in saying that I got puppies after they already signed it, uh, you know, marked it saying pet home only, you won't get it. If they put breeding rights, full breeding rights, that means you get papers for the upcoming puppies. And so I sent that in, put her name on it, put the owner's names, uh, and then mailed it. I paid the extra money to get it back within 10 business days because otherwise if you just send it in regular, um, they do, hey, get over here. What are you eating? Get over here. She's eating something, damn it. She's always eating something off the ground. Uh, so otherwise, if you just wait for them, they do it by months. And they'll let you know, okay, we're on December now. We're on January now. We're on, you know, and who knows how long that'll take. Because you got to imagine they're probably a bunch of, there's a bunch of dogs. Stop eating that stuff. It's just garbage. Come on. Uh, uh, you know, you've got to figure there's probably a ton of people sending in monthly you know, uh, you know, the puppy paperwork or sending in for, you know, cause they had a litter, you know what I mean? So I paid the extra money. It was only $15 to get it back within 10 business days, you know, cause you got to keep in mind these regist these registrations, these, uh, ABKC, AKC, U UKC, uh, ADBA, um, RKC, IBKC. There's a whole bunch of them now that recognize the American bullies. You know, they're all in it. They make money. You know what I mean? Every dog, they make money off of. Every litter, they make money off of. You know? Um, but at the same time, that helps you with your litters in the future to make money. Because if your dogs are registered, they're going to be worth more than a dog that's not registered. So, right now, she's only A K, uh, uh, excuse me, ABKC, American Bully Kennel Club. But they recognize on their front of their folders, they have... Uh, any bully looking type dog. So they have American uh, American, uh, American Bulldogs, Old English Bulldogs, Frenchies, American Bullies. Um, I seen some, uh, I think I seen some King Corsos, big dogs like that on there too. Um, but what I, I, what I, I said that to say this, that I'm gonna send in some paper, I'm gonna send in pictures to the eight, uh, UKC and my son's gonna send paper, uh, pictures into the ABE, uh, ABKC, and we're gonna try to get them registered with these other uh, registra registries. And you gotta send pictures of their front, the back, and their sides, and then they'll determine, you know, if they fit the criteria as American bully. Um, and then what happens is there is that the pedigree they can't follow the pedigree, right? Because they've never had a dog that bloodline 
uh, registered. Um, so basically it starts from there. So it'll be starting, Daisy will be starting as the, the foundation, you know what I'm saying, pretty much. Um, but I know, I'm pretty sure some of her family is uh, UKC. So if they could go off of, uh, you know, the registry numbers of the ABKC, I don't know. But nonetheless, um, I touched bases with a guy from Oklahoma. I think he's from New Mexico. He lives in Oklahoma. And he was telling me how you do it, um, which I knew that that was the criteria or that was the protocol for the ABKC. So it's the same with the UKC, which is, if you guys don't know, UKC stands for United Kennel Club. Um, and so I want to get her registered there and maybe possibly other ones too if I can. I think all that helps with the bloodline as far as the, you know, uh, the, 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 the quality, you know what I'm saying? Because she comes from great bloodline. Daisy does, and a lot of these puppies that are out there being sold right now, as I, I'm speaking, have her blood in them, her her grandfather or chatas on the pedigrees. So, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and cut this one short. She's getting a little away from here, so I'm going to call her right now. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I wish everybody a, a blessed, positive, productive hump day, Wednesday, West Side Wednesday. I might be coming live later on. I'm pretty sure I will. It'll be later, though, today. All right, peoples. Big Lou tapping out.